I'm Pat Dugod. This is the second screencast in a two-part series on factoring to help determine solutions to quadratic equations. We're going to use factoring techniques to factor trinomials. So we're going to start with a quadratic in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, its standard form, with a simpler case where the a term is 1. Now this can be factored into a binomial times a binomial in the form x plus p times x plus q. If we were to distribute that x plus p times x plus q out, using our distributive property, we get x squared plus qx plus px plus p times q or pq. So if we, com if we compared this standard form with what we got when we distribute out what's called the factored form, we would see some similarities. Well, we said a was equal to 1. For simplicity, we're doing that. But if we combine the px and the qx, we get p plus q times x. And so that or the p plus q term must be equivalent to the b term. Similarly, this last term, pq, p times q, must be equal to the c term if a is equal to 1. So that's an important concept, that this, these middle terms must add together to give you the b. And at least in the case where a equals 1, the c term is going to be equal to the p times the q. So there's a technique. I'm going to call it the x technique. And what we're going to do is we're going to put an addition symbol on the top of that x and a multiplication symbol on the bottom. And we're looking for two numbers that can add together, together to give us that b term and multiply together to give us the c term, at least in the case where a equals 1. That's the key to that. So let's practice this. So if we have the equation x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0, and when you, we want to use this x technique to, to factor it. So what we do is we're going to draw an x, and we're looking for two terms that are going to multiply to give us, that are going to add to give us the negative 2 and are going to multiply to give us the negative 15. So what we, we're going to need to do is list the factors of negative 15, because the two terms have to multiply to give us negative 15, and then find the one of those that adds to negative 2. Okay, so typically you're going to start with 1. Negative 15 involves 1 and 15. Uh, 2 isn't a factor. 3 is. It involves 3 times 5. Well, and then that stops because 5 times 3 is similar to 3 times 5. And we're looking for combinations of negative and positive numbers because they have to multiply to give us a negative. Now, it's crucial here that we identify the, the larger number needs to be negative because, after all, they do need to add to give us negative 2. So we're going to rule out anything where the any of the combinations where the larger number is positive. So that leaves us with 1 and negative 15 and 3 and negative 5. Well, 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2, so 3 and negative 5 are our two factors. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those two factors, the 3 and the negative 5, and put them in for m and p here, because together they must add up to get that middle term. So we rewrite this as instead of x squared minus 2x minus 15, we're taking that minus 2x and breaking it up into a plus 3x part and a minus 5x part. Together, they do add up to negative 2x. So we haven't changed it. We're just regrouping it. And now we're going to break off and factor by grouping these two parts, the x squared plus 3x part and then the 5x plus 15 part by factoring out a negative 1 because negative 1 is what they have in common. And so if we look at the greatest common factors here, we can factor out an x out of the first two terms. And this is called factoring by grouping. And so instead of x squared plus 3x, if we take an x out of both those terms, which is their greatest common factor, we are left with x times the quantity x plus 3. In a similar way, we can take a 5 out of both the 5x and the 15. And so it becomes minus 5 times what we're left with is x when we take out a 5 out of 5x and a 3 when we divide 15 by 5. So using the distributive property in reverse, this becomes the same as the quantity x minus 5 
times the quantity x plus 3, because we have x times x plus 3 minus 5 times x plus 3. And so we now know our solutions come from this factoring. Using the zero product property, either x minus 5 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. And when we solve each of these using their respect, respective properties of addition and subtraction, we get our two solutions, which are x equals 5, which will help make this zero, or x equals negative three. They're both valid solutions. They're both zeros of the function x squared minus two x minus 15. So when we look at a more general case where a is not necessarily one, a could be any number, and we're trying to factor ax squared plus bx plus z to be able to solve the quadratic equation, the only really difference is we're, look, we're looking for things that add together, factors that add together to give us B, but multiply together, together to give us AC, because we're actually multiplying the A and the C terms in the factored form. So what we need to do is find B, find AC, and write those factors of the AC term out. And we're going to factor by grouping just like we did in the last example to be able to get our solutions. Let's look at an example. So we're going to factor a trinomial in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not necessarily equal to 1. So here we have a more complex trinomial, 5x five, five, five squared plus 34x plus 24 equals 0. We want to be able to factor it so we can find the solutions. What is it that makes this 0? So our b term is 34. Our c term is 24, and our a term is 5. So we've got to go 5 times 24, which is 120. Unfortunately, 120 is a very busy number, has a lot of factors, so our work is cut out for us. The only difference between this and the previous example, in the previous example, a was 1. So when you multiply 1 by anything, you just get that anything, which happens to be the c. This is the more general case where a and c could be anything. So we've got to find the factors 120 that add together to give us positive 34. And they are the factors of positive 120, so we could either be dealing with two positive numbers or two negative numbers, but not combinations of both. To find factors, start at 1 and move your way up until you get to essentially the square root of that number. So 1 comma 120 is what factor, 2 comma 60, 3 comma 40. All of those are valid factors of 120, but 120 plus 1 is 121. 60 plus 2 is 62. 40 plus 3 is 43. We're, we seem to be getting closer to 34. Um, if you list out all the factors of 120, 4 comma 30, 5 comma 24, 6 comma 20, 8 comma 15, and 10 comma 12, the one we need is this one right here. We really don't need two negative numbers because they're going to always add up to give us a negative number. So we, in the end, we really needed only positive numbers. So 4 and 30, because they add up to give us 34, the numbers 4 and 30 are our two factors that we are going to work with. So now that we know that 4 and 30 are what's going to get this done for us, we take the original equation and we're going to break it up into those two terms with the 4 and the 30 substituting for m and p because 4x and 30x are going to add up to 34x. So we take our 5x squared plus 4x and our 30x plus 24, and we're going to break those two parts up and factor by grouping. So again, notice we've taken the 4 and the 30, and that's how we're using them. They're replacing the 34. Well, 5x squared and 4x don't have much in common except an x. So we're going to take out an x out of both of those. 30x and 24 have, have a number, integer number in common with each other. And if you look through this, you'll find that the largest number that goes into both of those, the greatest common factor, is going to be 6. 6 will go into 35 times. 6 will go into 24 four times. So we're going to take out an x and a 6, respectively. And so we get x times the quantity 5x plus 4 plus 6 times the quantity x plus 4. Once we've done that, we're going to re do the distributive property in reverse and rewrite this as x plus 6 quantity times quantity 5x plus 4. 
And so using the zero product property, either x plus six is zero or five x plus four is zero. We're gonna solve both of those and that's gonna be the solution, the two solutions to this equation. So subtraction property of equality, subtract six, subtract six. This is a two step. We're gonna subtract four and then we're gonna divide both sides by five. And so our two solutions are x equals negative four fifths and x equals negative six. As always, check to make sure those solutions work. But that's how we factor quadratics that have a more complicated a part than one. So in this screencast, we looked at how to factor quadratic equations and trinomials in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero using advanced factoring techniques.